So, what are direct objects and indirect objects in Portuguese? You use direct objects and indirect objects every day, regardless of what language you speak, but you may not know what they are. Let's go over direct objects first, in English. A direct object is a thing or things being affected by the verb or verbs in a sentence. Here are some examples of sentences with direct objects in English first. She pet the cat. They have finished their project. We gave Harry a present. In the first sentence, the verb is pet. The direct object of the sentence will answer the question, who or what is being pet? Obviously, in this instance, it's the cat that is being pet. So a cat is the direct object of the sentence. It's directly receiving the effect of the verb, which is, in this case, being pet. In the second sentence, there are two verbs, have and finish. So what has been finished? Their project has been finished. So project is the direct object of the sentence. What about the third sentence? The verb here is to give. But there's something different about this one. There are two things that are affected by the verb, Harry and the present. But all is not lost. Just remember to ask yourself, what is being given? The answer is clear. It's the present. Harry isn't being given to anyone in this sentence. Here's another way to think about it. If you're confused about which thing affected by the verb is the direct object, remember that the direct object is needed for a sentence to make sense. If you take out a present from the sentence, it becomes we gave Harry, and it's no longer a clear sentence. However, if you take out Harry from the sentence, it becomes we gave a present, which is much clearer. So what do we call the other thing affected by the verb? Or in other words, what exactly is Harry in the sentence? Harry is the indirect object in the sentence. The direct object is the thing or things secondarily affected by the verb or verbs in the sentence. Here are some examples of sentences with indirect objects in English. We'll get to Portuguese very soon. I made him a breakfast of scrambled eggs and toast. He poured his brother some orange juice. Please excuse the food theme, I'm kind of hungry right now. Now let's examine these sentences and find the direct and indirect objects in them. For the first sentence, let's ask the question, what is being made? In this case, the scrambled eggs and toast are being made, so they are the direct object. What about the indirect object? Well, what in this sentence is secondarily affected by the verb? Clearly the speaker of this sentence made breakfast, but the boy was made breakfast by the speaker, so although he wasn't the direct object of the verb, he is indirectly affected by the verb. Thus, he is the indirect object of the verb. What about the second one? Well, what's being poured? Certainly orange juice. You can't pour your brother, he's not a liquid. So orange juice is the direct object. And we've already kind of revealed what the indirect object is, the brother, as he's not being directly affected by the verb, but is being given the orange juice. That's enough of English grammar. How do we deal with direct and indirect objects in Portuguese, and how do we use pronouns in these sentences? Think about what we've learned about English direct and indirect objects. Here are some examples of Portuguese sentences with direct objects. A Maria fez uma bola on time. Nós ajudamos o estudante. Tu tens o teu almoço? Ela nada na piscina. Eu comi uma banana. Pausa aqui. Você pode identificar o complemento direto. Here are the answers for those. Remember that the direct object won't always be the last word or words in a sentence. You need to look for the meaning of the words in each sentence. Here are some examples of Portuguese sentences with direct and indirect objects. O Bill deu os jogadores os uniformes delos. Nós fizemos ela um almoço. Eu paguei ela um caderno. Eu paguei ela um suéter novo. Michael deu ela um taco de hockey. Here are the answers to those. Pretty easy, right? Hopefully you got all of those right, hopefully. Let's move on. How can we use pronouns in conjunction with direct and indirect objects? In English, we use pronouns like he, she, they, it, and all that stuff. They're usually used as a shorthand in situations where you and other people you're speaking to already know about the subject you're referring to. For example, if someone asks me if I'm going to the anti-disestablishmentarianism meeting, I would probably respond with, 
What? But if I knew what anti-disestablishmentarianism was, and that there was a meeting centered on anti-disestablishmentarianism, and the discussion of anti-disestablishmentarianism, I would respond with, yes, I'm going to it, instead of saying, why yes, kind sir, I will be attending the anti-disestablishmentarianism meeting. It makes sense to use it instead of anti-disestablishmentarianism, because it just takes longer to say anti-disestablishmentarianism. 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 So how does this work? I'm Portuguese. Let's say we have this basic sentence. Eu bebo água. What if I wanted to say, I drink it, because everyone knows I'm talking about water? I would say, eu bebo u. Here's a chart showing the direct object pronouns. If a sentence is positive and doesn't use a few choice words, the pronoun, in this case u, will be attached to the verb with a hyphen. However, if a sentence is negative and or uses que, quando, kai, ainda, tudo, todos, so, or tambai, the pronoun will go before the verb without a hyphen. Oh, here are some more rules. If the direct object pronoun is preceded by a verb ending in R, S, or Z, that letter is dropped and the letter L is added to the beginning of the direct object pronoun. Then you hyphenate the two words as normal. Hopefully you process that quickly. Remember these sentences? Now try to use pronouns with these sentences. Pausa aqui. Você pode conjugar os pronomes? Here are the answers. A Maria fe la on time. Nos ajudamu u. Tu time u. Ela nada a. Eu comi a. Not so hard, right? Just a bit different from English. The pronouns used for indirect objects are different. Here's a chart for them. Use these in a sentence like Eu pagué ela um caderno. If you use the indirect object pronouns, it would be Eu pagué lia um caderno. Now use pronouns in these sentences from before. Pausa aqui. Você pode conjugar os pronomes? Here are the answers to those. O bel deu ish o uniforms delish. Nos fizemos lia um amoso. Eu pagué lia um cadona. Ela pagué lia um sueta novo. Michael del lia um taco de hockey. Again, hopefully you got those right. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and I hope you learned something. This video was heavily inspired by videos created by Vihart and Twelve Tone. If you want more of this content, please support them. Their links are in the description. Here's my SoundCloud. Shout out to Flying Yoku. Shout out to Moist and Risen. Here's some beautiful music. Goodbye.